Hi there, I'm Trucker Ray, and before we get to our presentation, I wanted to share with you a new way to contact me. That's right, I finally got a post office box. A lot of you have been sending emails and leaving comments on my YouTube channel, and that is awesome, but I know some of you still like snail mail. So, if you have something you'd like to send, whether it's a card, or you want to buy me a cup of coffee, or whatever it might be, this is where you send it. P.O. Box 12306 Langley RPO, which stands for Royal Post Office, Logan Creek, British Columbia, Canada, V2Y0Y7. That's P.O. Box 12306 Langley RPO, Logan Creek, BC, Canada, V2Y0Y7. Now, if you're ready, let's get to our presentation. Good day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it might be that you are viewing. Welcome to my channel. If you're viewing for the first time, my name is Trucker Ray and I travel the highways of North America and I uh, love to share the gospel of Yeshua. As a Christian truck driver, I share the good, the bad, and the ugly, the reality of trucking, what it's really like out here. Um, some days are good, some days are lousy, and uh, well, most of the time you try to make the best of it. If you've been here before, welcome back. Good to have you back viewing once again. I do uh, apologize for the uh, delay of the on getting this video out. I've just been working on some other things, dealing with some things, working on a podcast. I know some of you are aware of that, and some of you have been enjoying that, but. Uh, I did discover a, maybe a possible easier way to be able to do my editing of my videos that won't be so painful on my arm, so I'll be trying that um, with this specific video, so hopefully that'll work out. Make it a little bit more comfortable. Sometimes it can be a bit, a um, little monotonous sitting on the edge of your bed trying to edit a video with your neck looking like that. And it would be nice if I could have everything looking straight ahead. So that's kind of what I'm going to try to do on this video. And if you're watching it, obviously it worked. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> little, a little bit different on what's going on today. Um, I did ask the company if they could just change up my routes a little bit. As much as they could. Because the same routes are getting monotonous and repetitious and it's actually it can be very depressing when you got to go that same route and you don't have a change of atmosphere change of scenery so um, I have a load now or should I say I have an empty trailer I'm taking and I'm taking it to Grand Forks in uh, in British Columbia to pick up uh, a load of um, nursery products like trees bushes etc obviously time for spring and that's going to uh, Winnipeg area I'm not entirely sure if it's Portage La Prairie or where and from there I don't really know where I'm going so it'll be nice I get to travel the highway 3 um, I did have to go there yesterday to pick up a load of lumber and come back a load of uh, firewood rather so the highways are good and to my knowledge uh, the highways are still good up there. I don't think they're lousy. Um, the temperatures are starting to get a little bit warmer. So normally in the winter time, that may not be a very fun run to go, the Highway 3 Crow's Nest. But I can tell you one thing right now, guys. This is how long it's been since I've driven that entire route from Highway 3, where it begins at the Coquihalla, all the way out into Alberta. I don't think I've ever done this route with you guys way back when even right since I started it I have driven the crow's nest I've went into places like trail and 
and uh, and other places like that. But I've never driven the entire length of it. I've driven through up to Soyuz and then crossed over the border, but never continued on there. So this will be a fun trip. This will be something you guys have never seen before. And this is exactly what I've been wanting to do for a while. I'm just taking a look right now. As you can see, if you can see that, those are the highways up on Crow's Nest. This is what you do. Any veteran or any seasoned or any trained trucker will look at his route before he goes. As you can see, it is nice, clear sailing the whole way. It looks like there's even some sunshine up there. Ooh I like it. I like it very, very much. So it looks like we're gonna have, um, yeah, it looks like we're gonna have, oh, Creston looks like it might have a little bit of snow on the ground. But I think it's just on the outside of it, it's not really, it's not really an issue. It won't be an issue. So I'm going to, like I said, Fort, no Fort Knox. <laughs> I wish. Cash it in, baby! Um, that is so funny. Okay. Just a second here. I just want to look at one other camera and check that one. All right. Yeah. So anyway, it's all good, baby. It's all good. So, um, yeah, Grand Forks, it is. And uh, we haven't done this in a while. Or should I say, I've never done Grand Forks and I hope you guys enjoy it. It, uh, the only problem with that particular load is that apparently it takes all day to load it because they hand bomb everything. So tomorrow, I get there today, I'll be getting there very early, I'll find a door, I'll park it in a door. And uh, yeah, from there, it's like uh, I'll be there by dinner time and then I'll just park it. I'll either put it in a door, drop the trailer, and then uh, go into town if I want, or I'll just park it, it depends. If there's facilities there I can use, then I will, I'll stay with my trailer. So anyway, that's that. I'm uh, going to open up a prayer if you guys want to join me. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, I thank you for this morning. Thank you, oh God, for how amazing you are, faithful, and how, and how patient you are with me. I ask you, oh Lord, that you please keep me safe on this highway, on my route, today, and the entire round trip. Would you bless everyone that's watching? those that are new to the channel and those that have been here a while Lord would you please bless them with a special anointing from this video I don't know if that's possible but I do ask that you bless them yourself Lord and uh, that this video would be a blessing to those that are watching it and I do pray for other opportunities like this Lord and dear Lord I just ask that you or should I say, I'm just very, very thankful and grateful that you've gotten me through some really, really difficult times in the last couple months. I really haven't advertised them because it's only my business. But you have been there for me and you've pulled me through and I am very, very grateful. And I pray, Lord, that you will accept my apology for just not being as upright as I want to be and that you would help me to move forward, even from this day, as a better Christian, a better man. I pray in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 All right, so let's uh, let's get out of here. Um, yeah, by the time I get to where I'm going there, yeah, it's, it should be there about no, no, I won't even be there by dinner. I'll be there by like two <laughs> or earlier.
Hope at the Flying J. I'm gonna top up my fuel. Uh, wow, I really noticed how uh, much lower the fuel prices are out here. It's like 203 a liter for fuel out in uh, the lower mainland. And it's 179 here, it's quite a difference. Quite a difference. Yeah, but they had to jack up the fuel for the long weekend, you know the way they are. It happens every time. There's just no reason for it, it's just greed. It's all greed, that's what it is. Oh, we can take this lane right here. Right here. Yeah, we're gonna have a probably very good fuel economy on this trip because we're picking up trees and that is uh, it's gonna be pretty light but that's okay because I'm gonna be going up and down a lot of passes along Highway 3 I'll be hitting most of those passes probably before I even get down there but there are some passes a Kootenai Pass in those areas there once you get in your Castle Guard area. Unfortunately, you can only do one side in Canada. One side at a time. I think there's one place, I think, I, can, I think you can use both sides. The main pump and the satellite, I think you can use that in, uh, where is that place? Sycamus. But I don't know any other place. Good opportunity change your garbage bag you get these ones at Costco these are really nice you get a lot of them on a roll however sometimes they're hard to open up go Filled up, topped up my uh, diesel exhaust fluid. I, I had three quarters of a tank, but when you're heading into these high altitudes, these passes where it could get cold, even freezing, and you need to, uh, and you get stuck somewhere, you're stranded somewhere, it's always good to have that topped up, including your fuel and obviously your reefer fuel. But uh, this load that I am picking up, I don't know if I'm gonna need a reefer on for that. I haven't seen on the bills whether or not I need to have my uh, reefer running on that. Maybe. I mean, it might, uh, it might be needed just to stop it from freezing because I am gonna be driving through, uh, going, making my way to Winnipeg with this load. So we'll see what happens. Well, I got a got a coffee and because uh, they don't gosh you know I got a tea for some reason a lot of the flying J locations across Canada are doing away with the decaf I don't know why they would do that I mean it's in a thing where it grinds its own separate beans each coffee maker like each one that grinds your own coffee has three separate um, reservoirs on top for three different types of beans and there's two machines so that means there's six reservoirs that you can fill with beans why get rid of the decaf it's not like you have to brew a pot every hour it just makes it on its own like when you push the button 
You know, some of the things I really question why they do things in Canada. I just don't get it. I don't understand it. Don't understand it one bit at all. Well, uh, you guys might remember one of the, there was one time I was making my way back from uh, Edmonton and they were doing all the pipeline work. They're almost done this. They're still working on some of it here. There's trace of it uh, straight ahead of you. No, that's not a runaway lane. <laughs> That is actually uh, where they brought some of the pipe through, and I've, they've already put it through. It's already been, it's already done. Uh, it's quite an amazing feat what they did. But uh, yeah, we won't be seeing that any of that where we're going. We're taking the Crow's Nest Highway, Highway Three, and uh, it's always a nice run. You got to be careful going through snow some of the turns though because it can catch up on you some of the turns are like 40 kilometer uh, zone curves and and uh yeah if you're not if you're not uh watching or be paying close attention to it you know it, it'll throw you off yeah you might want to move over a little oh they were almost on the line there look at the guy he's driving I can't stand people that can't stay in between the lines. I mean, that's a lot of room there. You can't keep your car in between the lines like that? I'm watching him on my mirror, and he's literally driving on the, on the line. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. So friends, for the next, uh, oh, give or take 231 miles, four and a half hours, we will be enjoying the sights of the Crow's Nest Highway, Highway 3. So why don't we just sit back and enjoy the ride because it is a very beautiful route. I hope you enjoy.
without And who deny It's what the fighting's all about I've made it into Grand Forks. Oh, how time is it anyway here? 152. Oh, okay, I did pretty good. I got here before the time I thought I was going to get here. Look at that beautiful river. Isn't that nice? Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. So, I will make my way to the nursery here, and then, uh, as I was saying before, I'll just drop the trailer and then uh, I'll go explore and look around. See what's in Grand Forks. I believe I'll be turning this way. Country Road Greenhouse. 
house is this must be the place where I'm going to. And they gave us specific instructions. Hope you're uh, hope you've been enjoying the run so far. Highway 3 is very beautiful. It's some of the nicest. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Slow down, Ray. Pay attention. <laughs> I want to turn here. This is what it's saying. I hope you've been enjoying the route. So far, it is uh, it is a very, very beautiful run. It really is. Um, especially in the spring. So I mean, it's nice in the winter, too. You get to see all the nice snow-covered trees and everything, but... Uh, it is much nicer in the spring and summer. Uh, but it ain't over yet because once we get loaded up tomorrow, we get to see a whole lot more of Highway 3 when we continue east. That'll be nice. That will be a nice run. Go through places like Castle Guard Trail and then uh, through Cranbrook, etc. So anyway, these are instructions I've been given here. Hopefully they're right, because uh, when you go blindly down some of these roads like this, you just don't really know what you're in for. <laughs> now taking order for hanging baskets. <clears throat> hmm. Let's hope. Uh, you don't want anybody behind me? Uh, nope. Advanced nurseries. I just want to see what the name is because there's a lot of nurseries around here. I don't want to make sure I'm going to the right place. So it should be up here on the left. This looks like a road. Oh, thank goodness. I see. Buildings. <laughs> it's always a good thing when you when you see buildings or you might be loading at instead of going up to a road that has nothing on it. You're like, oh no. Now where do I go? So this place that I'm looking for, I do believe, is right there. And they said it's number two. I got a feeling I know which one they're talking about here. There's that one right there, and there's that door right there. I got a feeling it's that second one right there. And... You know, 100 the whole way works, not 120 through the pass and then 90 to I bottom. Hopefully I can get in here okay. That doesn't leave me much room here. My goodness, are you kidding? Okay, I'm gonna have to do that a little wider. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go in that a little wider. Just making sure there's nobody behind me. They're not giving you much room to get in there. <laughs> have to drive onto the shoulder. Yeah, that's a typical steering wheel ripper right there. <laughs> <sighs> This is definitely the place. I'm just gonna find out if that other fence can be opened up. There's no way I can make that turn. Yeah, there's no way to get in there. Guys, come out here, he's, he's opening up the other gate. There's no way you can make that turn. That's better. Much better. So number two it is. So this is the one on the left that I'll be loading in. So I'll just open up my doors, back it in, drop the trailer, and go for a soda. No, no, I won't be drinking any sodas. Man, I wonder what this place is like when uh, 
when it's really raining, I bet you it's a mud pit. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I won't be staying here tonight. This will be a very boring place to stay for the whole day if I have to sit here. <laughs> so I got some load bars in here plus some straps. I'm just going to leave everything in there in case they want to use them. Hello. Hello. Okay, so I was talking to somebody today. I don't know if it was you or somebody else. Mm -hmm. Maybe not you. Maybe no. No. Okay. Oh, no, I'm new. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I asked him and he said I could drop the trailer. Yeah. And just go into town and get something to eat okay. or whatever. But you guys are loading in the morning, right? Yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, maybe uh, 7. Okay. 7 yeah. So the trailer dropped is okay then? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Yep, just wanted to make sure. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good morning. Yeah, I'm on my way back over to uh, where I am being loaded. I'm hoping that the guys are already begun the process of loading me up. But there's not a whole lot going on in town here right now at this hour. So I figured I would just take a little look around and show you guys a little bit of Grand Forks. I'm trying to find the, uh, the downtown area. Let's go down here. There's some nice old buildings down here. I figured I would just share some of this with you guys while I'm down here. I uh, just went over to A&W and had breakfast, which was nice. That wasn't too bad. Um, oh, it was a lot cheaper here though, I'll tell you that. I don't know what it is, but uh, anything in the Lower Mainland is outrageously overpriced. Wow, this is really charming little area here. Okay, I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to do a circle around and I'm going to come back. I don't think they're allowed to have trucks down here, but I think a bobtail, I think I can get away with that. But I just spotted a really nice old house up here. So I've got to look at that. There's a little bit of strip here too. Well, not an old house, rather, an old building. So the uh, <clears throat> really nice history here. This old building right here in the corner. I'm not sure what that is. Big old clock right there. Oh, there's a, uh, there's something there. Memorial. Oh, what is it? City Hall. Oh, that's what that is. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the original City Hall. 1939 to 1945, a memorial there. All right, so this is what we'll do here. I just want to do this just to show you guys what the little strip looks like here. It's quite charming. They got lights on the trees there. I bet you that looks nice at nighttime. Yeah, but it's kind of nice. Look at the nice mural mural on the on the uh, wall there too what's that grandpa and grandson fishing there that's nice isn't it we got a GM theater here <laughs> country music showcase <laughs> excuse me Ah, oh, good old sneezing kicking in again as usual. Yeah, this is a very nice little area. It's 
So there you go. A little bit of Grand Forks for you. Uh, seems like a nice little area. I think it'd be a nice community to live. Especially when they have their like centennial day or whatever it is, right? Someone's having a a fire under the bridge. <laughs> Believe it or not. Out here in Grand Forks. Cute, charming little town. There's still homeless people here living under bridges. This is all due to this wonderful economy we have now. Nobody can afford to live. They just can't afford to live. Okay, well, we made it back. The big question is, are they even loading me yet? <coughs> One way to find out. I'll go back and look and see if the door is even open back there. I don't want to be uh, connecting to the trailer until I know for a fact that nobody's in it so it doesn't send everyone flying because it does jolt the trailer a bit. Look at this. Whew. That's insane. Those bushes are just put right in there. They're all stuffed in there. How do you unload that? I just came in here about five minutes ago and everybody was in here. There was four guys in here and now they're all gone. <laughs> it's actually almost comical. Okay. Well, <laughs> I thought maybe straps or load bars were going to be needed, but I don't think that's going to be necessary. <clears throat> well, they're not going to be. I don't think they got much longer. I got a feeling I'm going to be out of here within the hour. <laughs> well, when I'm done with those guys, it's obvious I'll be looking for a trailer washout. Woo yeah! Well, we don't need the reefer on unless the temperatures were freezing, and I don't think we're going to get freezing temperatures. So let's see if I can close this. Yep. Ooh, what a mess. This is going to be a mess. <laughs> I do not envy the washout guy. He is not going to be happy with that. But it is what it is. I won't bother putting on anything on there yet because there may be a seal I need to put on. But this is gonna be a very light load. <laughs> very light load. I'm all finished here. Ah, he opened up the gate for me. Right on. So. Nice guy. Yeah, I was talking to him, uh, this gentleman over here a little bit about the area. And they have a real issue with homeless people out here. Which you would never expect. In a town out here in BC like this, in the interior like this, or you just wouldn't expect that. 
but it's everywhere. It is everywhere. It's too bad. And you know, there are ways they could solve that problem. There is a, uh, an establishment that's in the newest area. It's the old uh, Riverview Hospital. They used to use that hospital for uh, people that had mental issues. But it's a big building that's totally empty and they could use that to house a lot of homeless people there. And uh, I don't know why they don't do that. They could feed them, they could provide for them, whatever. Well, where's that money gonna come from, Ray? Well, I'll tell you where it's gonna come from. How about all the money that the government is getting selling drugs? Right, they legalize dope. They legalize, legalize drugs, marijuana. Why not take a percentage of that and put it towards the homeless? and fixing that problem. Oh, I'm sure there's billions of dollars that have been made since they legalized drugs. Why don't they put it towards that? Good question, Ray, I wonder why.
so find another fool like before to Brandon. Brandon, Manitoba is where I am. And I'm gonna stop here for about 10 or 15 minutes to stretch my legs, grab a coffee. And I also wanted to say, I don't think it's the cream and the coffees that are bothering me, because I have a coffee when I'm in Langley. And I don't have this problem. I think it's the truck. There's too much dust inside this truck. Um, this time of the year is really bad for it, especially when you're driving along the main highways. You get all the sand and the dust from the highways, <clears throat> from all the, uh, basically you're, you're getting it all from the, uh, from the roads where they drop all the sand on all the roads. And this is the time of year where you drive down the road and it just gets really, really cloudy. and smoky everywhere but it's not smoke obviously it's it's the dust it's the dust from the road well friends i have made it into manitoba i'm in brandon manitoba actually oh, nice potholes welcome to brandon manitoba oh boy that does not look like that's going to be fun to go around over there. I don't think I have a choice. I want to get around all these guys. But I'm going to take it super slow. Oh, wow, look at the size of the potholes over there. That's ridiculous. Well, you're going to have to take... i got to take this wide. Look at the size of the potholes. Wow, it wasn't that bad the last time I came here. Look at that one there, that's crazy. Look at this guy, some guy lost mud flaps and everything going through that. <laughs> Woo -wee. That is sickening when you see that. When a place like this can't even maintain their lot like that. Come on, baby. Just crazy potholes everywhere. Whoa. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> come on, come on, truck, move. Don't you dare get stuck. 
<laughs> well, that's ridiculous, isn't it? You think they would fill those holes or some get a grater in there or do something, man? That is just crazy. But nobody wants to spend money nowadays on any kind of uh, maintenance. And uh, for those of you that live in Manitoba, I don't want you to take this the wrong way, but I think you would also agree with me. Um, they don't take very good care of the roads out here in Manitoba. They don't. It's actually some of the worst conditions you'll ever see on highways. To give you any idea, straight directly ahead, I'm looking at one, one huge hole there. Watch this car, he's gonna have to go all the way around if he wants to turn left there. Or is he gonna turn right? Okay. That's gonna be really, really bad when I try to get out of here. I didn't know it was that bad or I wouldn't have done this. Oh well. I'll have to do the very best I can. Problem is I can't just go straight up. Oh, maybe I could. Then cross over and then go back straight down. Maybe I'll do that. I wonder if I can, hold on. Yeah, I can. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. There's no way I'm turning left there. I could lose a mud flap going through that when it bottoms out. Eek. Anyway, as I was saying, I think you guys would agree with me that live in Manitoba, they take very, very bad. Uh, they don't take their roads very serious out here. It's really, really bad. Headingly, it's bad. And Winnipeg area, it's bad. Let's see what that guy does. Oh, they're gonna go for it. Let's see how deep that hole is. Let's see how deep it is. Hi, can I get an extra large double double decaf, please? Thank you very much. Oh my gosh, there's a number pot in there. Whew. Just look at the size of this pothole. I don't even know how deep that is. Well, there's another guy leaving right now. Let's see which way he goes. I got a feeling he's gonna be going west, but at least if he goes east, I'll be able to see at least what my fate will be if I go that way. Which way is he going? Oh, he's definitely going the other way. Wow. I think it's crazy how they haven't done nothing for the, or tried to fill any of that. I have made it into Carmen and uh, I can honestly say I've never been through here before. Lots of little towns in Canada I haven't seen before. That's one of the reasons why I like boats like this because they take you to places you've never been to before. So I want to see if my my research is correct on uh, where I can park my truck. Hopefully it is. 
what do we got up here? Might as well pay attention here. We got a co-op here. That's probably gonna close tonight. Got a co-op store. I know the place I'm looking for is a Tim Hortons. It'll be up here on the left when I turn left. Oh, cute. Look at that nice old building on the right there, guys, with the clock on it. They got a little bit of history here. That looks nice. Some nice old buildings. Yeah, that's, that looks like that's the main strip there. Well, maybe not. It's part of it anyway. Here's some other nice old buildings on the left and the right. Yeah. I love this part when I drive through these towns. I like looking at the, the old infrastructure and the buildings. The town hall. That's probably a city hall there. I miss looking at that stuff, to be honest with you. When you take the same route all the time, it gets monotonous and incredibly boring. All right, so the road I'm wanting is right here. I get to see real fast. Whether or not, Thank you. Whether or not my uh, view of the map worked or not. So the place I was looking at should be right up here on the right. There's the subway. Yeah. Uh, we better take a little bit of a look here. There's no stopping signs everywhere. How convenient is that? Ah, that's not good. That is not good at all. But there's no, there's no no stopping sign here. I guess I could go around the block and do another approach here and park it here. But I'm wondering, because right next to that Tim Hortons up there, there is a big church parking lot. And I see the church there, and I'm wondering if they'll let you park in behind there. They might. Oh, I can't turn down there. I need a wider approach to do that. See, there's a big lot right there. I bet you I can park it right in there. Oh, there's parking back there too. But that's for the hotel. Oh no, there's a big lot there too. Aye, aye, aye. Wow. Okay. At least I know I can park it. So let's see where I can turn around here. into this place here, it's called Slice. Nice dirt area back here. Now if it was rain, <laughs> raining up, <coughs> this probably wouldn't be very pleasant. All right, so I have established some parking for the night, which is really cool. And then tomorrow, it's probably going to take them a little while to unload me. So, that's okay. It'll give me a chance to work on my video. And that'll work out really well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to line up here and then I'm just going to back up in a straight line. Actually, I can park it right here.
sure would have been nice to have access to some hot water to make a tea this morning. Well, good morning, everyone. Made it here to Revelstoke last night uh, from Granfell. And uh, yeah, it's actually quite warm out here. It's about nine degrees. I got up this morning just to walk around to my pre-trip and everything. Couldn't believe how warm it was out here. Really, really nice, pleasantly nice. So now, I make my way out of here with about five and a half, five, three quarters hours left. Should be able to get to, uh, back to the yard by maybe two o'clock, maybe one o'clock, 1.30. That would be nice, huh? And, uh, then I can get right to working on this particular video that you're watching right now. <laughs> because uh, it's a special one. Because uh, I didn't mention this before. Because I didn't want it to spoil your video time. But it will be my last video here on the channel. Um, and the reason behind that, there's a few reasons. First of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody who has been watching my videos for as long as you have. And the support you've given me has been wonderful. Been noticing in the last year, um, the popularity of the channel has just gone down. Um, that's probably why you've noticed me not as active on the channel. Um, and the funny thing is too, is that I've actually increased the quality of the channel, but yet the popularity of the channel is decreasing. And I'm not bitter about it. Everything must come to an end. That's just the way it is. And uh, now that I'm also doing some other projects like Truth and Testimony and because of the days we live in, I think any of the Christians would agree with me out there when I say that the days we're living in right now can be very scary to people, very confusing. And I think it is only appropriate that I put 100% of my efforts where it is needed into promoting the gospel and what's going on in the world and what's coming, etc. So I'm going to transition from this channel to working on the other channel 100% of the time. So if you want to see what I'm doing or what I'm up to, you can go to Truth and Testimony, the broadcast. You'll find the link in the description below. That's what I'll be doing over there with my buddy Adrian Scott. I also have a podcast going over there where you can listen to everything we're doing on audio format. In case you're sitting in a coffee shop and you just want to have a cup of coffee and listen on your earbuds or whatever. It's going to be a very fun channel. It's going to be a mix of everything. Not just story time with grandma. It's not going to be like that at all. It's channel that's going to be talking about Bible prophecy and really focusing on end time events and just other really informative uh, topics that I think people should know and that will help educate them as well. I mean, myself and Adrian, we never claim to ever be scholars or anything. We're just doing what's on our heart, what we feel we need to do. So... You never know, maybe one day I'll be out on the highway and I'll run into a little town and I'll want to share it on my channel. I might do that. But as for regular videos, no, I won't be doing that anymore, you guys. So I'm going to leave the channel up as an archive so people can enjoy it. Maybe one day it'll impact people the way it used to. And again, I want to thank everyone who's been so devoted and long-term. I do 
appreciate it very much. I do. <coughs> and who knows what the future will bring, maybe, maybe way down the road or later down the road, I'll decide to come back and do some videos on there, I, I don't know. But in the meantime, my focus is all gonna be on working with my buddy Adrian Scott and hopefully again, Sean McGill on Truth and Testimony. Again, thank you for your faithfulness to those that have been faithful. And um, I love you guys all, and I hope you keep me in your prayers. And for my Christian brothers and sisters out there, we're not gone. We're just moving over next door. Come and check us out at Truth and Testimony, the broadcast. Like I said, the link is in the description below. That's where I will be in... We're going to hopefully do a lot of great things on there. <coughs> Excuse me. So I want to finalize this trip, this video, this final video, with a bit of a montage through BC on my way back to Langley. So farewell, everyone, for now. And God bless you all in the name of Yeshua. Bye for now.